Dear Rector Terry, dear uh, friends, relatives and colleagues, I would like to talk about large enterprise system implementation challenges. Uh, may I have only 20 minutes of time, so I'll only concentrate on the major disasters in the area. Uh, <laughs> there are plenty of those available. What are enterprise systems? These are systems that integrate and standardize uh, business processes so, and information resources or so, organizations. If you want, they are advanced control systems that provide, for example, accounting information that is used for controlling companies. Enterprise resource planning is often used more limited uh, definition for these systems. One of the ideas is that they provide a single system that allows information to be shared across all functional areas and in global corporations across the globe. And provides unified definitions of data across the organization and standardized processes, making people perhaps more replaceable, but also controlling easier. This sounds like a great plan, doesn't it? One system, we don't have to buy trillions of those. When it's done, then we can keep on running the company. Uh, it is not so easy always. I guess everybody has been reading about this. If you search the news, newspapers or the web, it's very easy to find challenged uh, projects, ERP disasters, when I lecture in this hall, I usually ask the students in the ERP class to read uh, one particularly hard project. And the name of the uh, story is Another Trip to Hell. And it tells about one of these things. Here are some of these examples. National Railway's ticketing system. Uh, only like four days ago, I was making travel expenses and still the national railway ticket system shows when you when you, when you, what is the type of payment it says dmt i have no clue what this, what this is it's some internal code for them and i always have to explain to our controller that this is just how the system works national electronic patient record system and database uh, it has been going on. It, it, money goes into that abyss for the foreseeable future. Ionova Registry was supposed to be a three-year project in early 2000. It has been mostly implemented in 2011. Uh, Taurus is one of the more famous examples. It's London Stock Exchange System that was developed for 10 years, and in the 90s, 700 million pounds was still money. It was a big amount of money. Never, never deployed. Yeah. Uh, I would say that nearly all public sector IT initiatives in the last 10 years have been seriously delayed and or have exceeded their budgets. And private sector is not much better in this. Uh, Typical problems of these are delays. I'm still in the Taurus. I like this quote a lot. The new project manager, when she came in after five years, asked, are we any closer to the end than last year? And the answer was, we don't know. No. Cost overruns in this Taurus, it was initially 11 million, and we don't know how much it actually costed, but 600 million pounds is a good average of the estimates. Performance underruns are another typical problem. problem and railway ticketing is an example of this. Delivering in time and on budget, but wrong system. E-health records, I, it has not yet been delivered, but I make here a, an educated guess that this is how it will be, because the system Definitions have been more or less frozen a few years ago, and it will be deployed in a few years. 
why we should study these things? Uh, they, they cause huge uh, losses and they can seize uh, the operation of companies. And poorly functioning systems can cause poor morale, even absenteeism. In the healthcare systems, it is known that people don't like to work with them. It causes early retirements and so on. And when an implementation goes real bad, it can bankrupt companies. Fox Meyer is a famous example of this. Lots of case studies done. It was the fifth largest uh, US uh, pharmaceuticals distributor, and they impl implemented one of the early implementers of enterprise resource planning systems and went bankruptcy when nothing could be delivered for extended period of time. Can we do something to remedy this? So generally, the technology really is not an issue. Most of these are really management problems. If something can be imagined, if money is no object and time is no object, it usually can be implemented. But large scale change projects are always difficult. And change management is critical for these. And the scope of these systems, how to fit with the organization and the organization's abilities early on in the project. Some of the solutions we have are like dividing the large, real large implementations into more manageable pieces and sequencing the implementations. Uh, yesterday it was announced that uh, who's and Helsinki are not uh, developing the megasystem Apotti as, as far-reaching as expected, but it goes back to the planning boards. And I hope that they really divide it into more manageable pieces, because otherwise it's going to be another very expensive thing which can't be deployed. Uh, it's interesting in this area that most of the time when something goes badly wrong, wrong in this. The companies who deliver these systems, like the railway system, the companies say that buyers were bad. And it's an interesting view of this world. It is often true in these cases. Buyers don't know what they have been buying or what they were sold. But I would say that we should perhaps teach them to, then the buyers to be better and demand, more demanding from the sellers. One suggestion, I also have this classical drama here, so I, have, so I have the solution available. And this is a project we have, a four-year academic Finland project started last month, which we are doing together with uh, Lappenanta University of Technology and Tampere University of Technology. And uh, we have two postdoc researchers, Hilke Meres and Ritta Hekkala here who are participating in this project. Then we have actually, even if this is free academic pursuit from Academic Finland, we have company cases that we plan to, plan to use to understand issues here. Now our idea is simply to understand actors in certain projects. To give you an example, in the, uh, in the national health record system and especially the uh, operating systems of uh, hospitals, it's, they want now to account and control these things. But no accountants, no controllers have been involved when the systems have been uh, developed. And it means that the, it's not easy to account. People are accounting, for example, in certain hospital in here, different things and in the same size hospital in Turku. This is because right people were not necessarily in the right phases available. We seek to find uh, quality factors for these projects and metrics. This is more of the technical university stuff. And then we plan to deploy new methods and practices. And we use uh, 
research approach actually developed partially here in previous research. Uh, this uh, action design research, the method was actually initially devised in Sateenkaari cafe bar here outside. Now, unfortunately, Sateenkaari has ceased to exist, but it worked as a great inspiration for me and Monk scene and starting this. And what we expect to gain from this? We believe that we can identify really these development networks and actors and practices. What this mean, means in practice is that when somebody in a, a Finnish company wants new field to be measured in the future accounting system. He or she tells to the ERP system vendor who then contracts somebody perhaps in uh, uh, Czech Republic or uh, China or somewhere that they actually implement this. And there are a huge amount of communications needed for this to happen and when in China, this is implemented, and then when the vendor deploys it, then it, when it comes back to you, it, it has some likelihood that it actually is what you asked. And we hope that with our results, it, it is a little bit better likelihood. We want to develop um, scientifically evaluated tools for ERP development that are better than what is uh, done currently. Practic practically, uh, this is, means that implementers and buyers will be, have impro improved competencies and hopefully little less uh, wasted effort comes as a result of this. I can't say that anything that we invent would really cut this, say, by half, but if 5% more successful projects would happen or 10% less of this, this, we would actually save a lot of money and lots of people nerves, people's nerves. So how can this help? Uh, we have less finger pointing afterwards uh, in totally different field. If you look at the, uh, the nuclear power plant that is being uh, d developed and some, sometime probably will give us power. There's a huge amount of finger pointing now whether the buyer or seller is the first culprit in there. And it means improved accountability here also. And if the competencies are better, there will be fewer disasters and slightly better chances of success. And in some cases, these systems might make people's lives easier. Finnish tax system, if there are people old enough to remember when we were two years without actually paying taxes because the technology was not in place. But when it actually was deployed, now we have very working, easy to use, proactive service system for the taxpayers. The burden of wasted effort, we would save a lot of taxpayer money and company money if we get this little better. And I believe that it's, in this Living Plus uh, team, we have hugely improved quality of life for uh, all stakeholders who are burdened with these projects. I know that people can't sleep when they hear that there's a new implementation project coming. So if we knew that we can do it in an orderly manner with normal working hours, probably people would be happier. Thank you for your attention.